begins to break the defeat cycle in your life. As you begin to trust him and you begin to, to hide in him and learn that you can trust him and you're looking for those little victories, then you begin to notice how God begins to break the defeat cycle in your life. And in Psalm 9, beginning with verse 12, this is where we begin to see it. First, we see that God is an avenger. That's what it says. For he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. O Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death, that I may declare your praises in the gates of the daughter of Zion, and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by His justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked return to the grave, all the nations that forget God. Now, isn't it amazing that God says, listen, you can trust me because it is my job to avenge the enemy. It's not your job. It's not your job to avenge the enemy. It would be real easy for me to take off on people who have done me wrong. It would be real easy for me to just start slamming them and just start doing, finding ways to just get back at them. Because I really would like to get back at people who have done me wrong. But God says he's the avenger. And I want you to notice something. This passage, verses 12 through 17, confirms something. That God does avenge the afflicted. He does do it. Those who have been afflicted. Those who have been, who are going through a cycle of defeat in their life because of circumstances that are beyond their control. Sometimes it is because of things that they've done. But they are the afflicted. And God says, I will avenge you. I will have mercy. I will have mercy on your life. God is known by that. He is, verse 16 says, he's also known by his justice. Now listen. Listen. Justice, in a very practical sense, says that God knows when you've had enough. He's just. He's a just God. And He knows that enough is enough. And there have been times in my life when I've cried out to God and I've said, God, enough is enough. I don't know that I can take any more of this. And it's interesting how God's response basically is, I knew that. That's why I've already started doing this and this and this and this in your life. If you'll just notice, you'll see that I've already started that. You know, it's, it's a promise from God that the wicked will go to the grave and all the nations that forget God. That's a promise. But the converse of that promise is that those who do not forget God will be blessed, will be honored, will be lifted up. The second thing that we see is that God is the conqueror, verses 18 through 20. But the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted ever perish. Arise, O Lord, let not man triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, O Lord. O Lord. Let the nations know they are but men. Now, what I love about this passage is that it, is, it has that word hope in it. I love that. Hope in the New Testament and in the Old Testament is the same. It's not the same word, but it means the same thing. And it is that word, and you've heard me define it before, confident anticipation. Confident anticipation. That I have a confident anticipation that God is going to do something. That He is up to something. That I can trust Him. That He is the conqueror. God has not forgotten you. He is still in the business of meeting needs. That's what He does. And He affirms that over and over and over and over again in the New Testament. There are so many verses in the New Testament that says God meets needs. The reason that there are so many verses in the New Testament that say that is because God wants you to know that that's His job. You know what your job is. God knows what His is. His job is to meet needs. And when there is a need in your life, then God says, that's where I'm going to be at work. You want to know what God's will is for your life? Look at the needs in your life. That's where God's at work. You want to know what God's up to in your life? Look at the needs in your life because God's at work there. And so when you say, wow, I've been defeated and everything has fallen apart and my life is just a mess... And it just seems like God's not doing anything on the contrary. That's exactly where God is at work. Because God is in the business of meeting needs. You just need to start looking at how he's going to meet those needs in your life. Start watching what God is doing. He is in the business of meeting needs. That's what he does. And by meeting your needs, God will not allow your hope to vanish. That confident anticipation that you have. God says, I'm going to make sure that your hope does not vanish. You need a little hope in your life? Start watching how God begins meeting needs in your life. 
The word that's, uh, that's used here for man, by the way, I, I, <laughs> it's so interesting, uh, particularly in verse 20. Strike them with terror, O Lord, let the nations know they are but men. The word that's used there is, is a word that means frail mortal. Frail mortal. God says, I want you to know that when you are against me, when you stand against me, when you don't do things my way, that you are a frail mortal. You are no match against God. But what he says by saying that is that when you are in me, you are strong beyond your means. You are greater than your own strength because God becomes your strength. So God is the conqueror. Then we go to this third part, uh, which is Psalm 10, and that is we see that God is the judge. God becomes the judge. The 10th Psalm begins with the perennial question, why, O Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? Do you ever think that? Of course you do. We all have thought that. There have been times in our life when we just looked at our situation and we said, where is God when you need Him? Where was God when this happened? Why did God allow that to happen? Where is God when you need God? Why does He let things happen? Why does He let bad things happen to good people? Where is God? The question has always bothered me. It implies that God shuns trouble, that He doesn't want to have to deal with our conflicts, and really, nothing could be further from the truth. It was the answer to this question that God used in my life to begin drawing me to Himself. That was a question that I found one day in the upper floors of the library at William Jewell College, and I'd only been there like two or three times. But one day I found that just somebody had just kind of scratched it in a, in a little, little, on a wall by one of the little desks. And in one of those cubicles, somebody had marked on the desk and, and on the wall there, if God is so far away, who moved? And I was, I was lost. I mean, I, I didn't know the Lord at the time. In fact, I think I was the last person that got saved at William Jewell College. And... Uh, <laughs>